Hello, in this video we're going to talk about equations of lines and planes. So let's begin with the definition. The equation of a line parallel to vector v and passing through point p, given by x0, y0, z0, is r equals r0 plus t times v. Where r0 is equal to the vector with terminal point x0, y0, and z0. So to get a sense of how this works, let's look at an explicit example, and then we'll move on to generalize this. Suppose that r0 is equal to the vector 1, 2, and v equals the vector 1, 1. Let's plot r, the resulting vector, from adding r0 plus t times v. So first time through, let's let t equal 0. So when t equals 0, we're looking at the vector r, which equals r0, so vector 1, 2, plus 0 times the vector v. Well, that just results in the vector 1, 2. Okay, so let's plot that. So I'm going to put a few tick marks on our graph here so that we can see what we're doing. And I'll go up the vertical axis as well. And we want to plot this vector over 1 up 2. That was not a very good plot, so let me see if I can make that a little bit better. We have a nice graph for ourselves. Okay. Well, that's reasonably good. Now let's move on to look at t equals 1. When t equals 1, our resulting vector looks like 1, 2, plus 1, 1. And adding those vectors up, we get over 2, up 3. Let's plot that vector. So over 2, over 2, up 3, looks something like the following. Next, let's look at what happens when t equals 2. When t equals 2, r looks like 1, 2, plus a 2, times 1, 1, and that results in 3, 4. And we can plot that vector. So it's going to be over 3, up 4, over 3, up 4. And you can kind of see what's happening. For each tip that I left off at, I'm only moving over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. And so this vector over here is kind of acting like a slope. It's telling us how to change um, from wherever we started, which was r naught. And lastly, let's look at what happens when t equals negative 1. So when t equals negative 1, we have r 1, 2, minus 1, 1, and that looks like 0, 1. And so if we plot that vector, that vector is just right here, starting at the origin and shooting. Okay, so as you can see, our graph gets pretty messy. We have a bunch of vectors, and it's pretty hard to see what's going on. So a better idea is just to keep track of the endpoints of these vectors. Right? So a vector is defined by its terminal point, assuming we're talking about standard position vectors. So let's just keep track of the endpoints. So if I were to plot the endpoints of all these vectors, let's see when t equals 0. Put our tick marks on here. So when t equals 0, I'm over 1, up 2. When t equals 1, I'm over 2, up 3. When t equals 2, I'm over 3, up 4. And when t equals negative 1, I'm over 0, up 1. And so now we can really see what's going on with the line. The line looks like... line that passes through all those points. And if I was a better artist, my dots would lie perfectly on that line. Okay, and so this is what we refer to as line L. Okay, 
Okay. All right, so a general picture of what's happening here is that we start with R0. Right? So we start with R0 and we are given a vector v. We're interested in the line that passes through the tip, the terminal point of R0, and which is parallel to v. And we know what that line will look like. Looks something like the following. Okay, I'll label that line L. And how do we get that? Well, we say it consists of the points or vectors R given by R0 plus some scalar multiple of vector V. And we've seen that in action for a particular example up above. Now, when we look at this vector V, with components a, b, and c. If that vector v is used to describe line l, the numbers a, b, and c are called direction vectors of l. And as we said, we have r equals r0 plus t times v. Substituting in what we know for v, we can actually write an equation for r using the components of R0 and vector V. So remember R0 is given by this terminal point X0, Y0, Z0. We have a scalar multiplication, so the second vector here is T times A, T times B, and a T times C. And performing vector addition, what we end up getting is we get that the line L or vector r has first component x0 plus t a, second component y0 plus t times b, and third component z0 plus t times c. And if we were to just pull out these first, second, and third components, which describe x, y, and z, we get three equations, and these are called parametric equations. So we could say x looks like x0 plus ta for equating first components. Equating second components, we have y equals y0 plus t times b. And the third components, we have z equals z0 plus t times c. And these equations right here, this is what we refer to as parametric equations. Lastly, instead of writing parametric equations, we could write symmetric equations. So symmetric equations are obtained by taking the parametric equations and solving for t. So let's do that. So starting off with our parametric equations, we will solve each of those for t. So first we have an equation for x, so moving everything to one side, we'll have x minus x naught equals t times a, dividing by a on both sides. That leads us to saying x minus x naught over a equals t. Similarly, we end up with y minus y naught over b equals t. And lastly, z minus z naught over c equals t. Now look at this. We have three equations. They're all set equal to t. And so the symmetric equations are obtained by setting those three pieces equal to each other. So here are our symmetric equations. We've got x minus x naught over a equals y minus y naught over b and a z minus z naught over 
C. Okay, and so these are what we refer to as the symmetric equations. I'm just going to make a note here that note if A, B, or C um, equals zero, well what would happen? Up above here, if for example A were equal to zero, then you just have X equals X naught and that gives you some sort of plane. And so I'll just write a, a very general case here. You have something like, um, say, x equals x naught, right, if a equals 0. And you would set that equation aside, and then you would write your y minus y naught over b equals z minus z naught over c, and this would give you some sort of plane. Okay, and that doesn't always happen, but, you know, if you get that case, you know how to handle it.